I grew up in the uh, city of La Puente, uh, San Gabriel Valley. Um, you know, the, everything around me was gang members, you know, so I didn't really think it was anything different to be a gang member. I thought it was what I was supposed to be. Stereotypical gangster in the neighborhood is good for a minute, right? We get all the fame and then what? We don't get a certificate because we're the baddest gangster in the SGV, right? Mm -hmm. Our certificate, our degree is going to prison. I was living two lives. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm, I'm doing good in school. I always did good in school. I was very smart, but I was also coming home and, and I love that gangster life. Like I, I love I love the, the rush that I actually prayed, you know, God, please take this addiction from me. And then, you know, and my, answer, my prayers were answered through the stroke. Those videos started from me being empty. And now that I'm full, I could share it with you. Come on, somebody. Yo, welcome back to Reentry Network Podcast. It's your boy, Yak. It's your boy, T. Ooh, we got another one for y'all, man. I want to welcome our boy, Jason, to the building, man. Come on, Jason man. Come on. Chico. Come on. Yep. Let's go. Come on, you know, it's a pleasure to be here to share my story. Um, a lot of people never get to opportunity to share their story. Nobody wants to hear our opinion, and I appreciate you guys. There you go. Uh, the work that you do is awesome, and and I just love. It's a great feeling to be here around this great energy. Hey, well, thank look, you, thank you. We for appreciate you for being yeah. here, but we're gonna have to end this interview because of the Lakers. So I'm. Like, nah, I'm playing, <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> Clippers house. I knew it was gonna be kind of rough. <laughs> Either you're, um, you're against me or you're for me. So I'm like, oh, That's wonder. Right. Which yeah. area am I going into? I gotta make sure I wear the Lakers or Clippers. No, nah, yeah. yeah. boss is a big Clippers fan, so I, mean, I hope she catches that. <laughs> um, now nah, we, we appreciate you because you you reached out, or you're interested in being part of the podcast, yeah. and I think that's what we want these like individuals to do, man. We want to be able to. We want you to reach out to us and say, yo, I want to say a story or I want to tell my story. Yeah, this is the platform. Yeah. Come. We don't want no big time people coming in here. Like we want you're still big time. Yeah. You're a community, Come bro. On. And you're going to be big time. Come you on. Know? 100%. So um, we want to talk a little bit about where you grew up, you know, what that was like, just like the usual that we do. Yeah. Um, so talk to us about that. Yeah, I grew up in the uh, city of La Puente, uh, San mm. Gabriel Valley. Um, you know, with the, my time growing up, you know, um, Everything around me was gang members, you know, so I didn't really think it was anything different to be a gang member. I thought it was what I was supposed to be. Family, all whole families from the neighborhood. So it's not like, oh, I want to be a gang member. I am a gang member. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you know, it's not something that I strive for. It's something that I was. Mm -hmm. So my my community, we were so um, engulfed in trying to protect it, trying to protect the neighborhood. As a young boy, you know, I grew up without a father. First off, you know, and that's what kind of catapulted me into the gang yeah. life because, you know, I wanted that guidance. Mm -hmm. I wanted that recognition, which I didn't get. And I always thought, you know, why, why hasn't my, why hasn't my father came into my life? Is it me? So I blame myself, you know, I blame myself, you know, maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe he doesn't want to get to know me. So I went into the neighborhood and looked to the homies as recognition as that father figure. So, uh, you know, in them, I was trying to please them, you know, trying to, um, just impress them, you know? Now look what I did. Oh, I got this for you. Oh, are you happy? What else do you need? And not knowing that I was actually putting myself at risk, um, putting my, my, my community at risk, because yeah. I was just trying to make someone happy. And then, you know, uh, growing up, you know, grew up in a single household, I was teaching myself how to be a man, which I thought was being a gangster. Yeah. Because in my neighborhood, all the gangsters get respect. Because why? They have the guns, they have the girls, they have the power. They have the respect or the fear. So I was like, I want, that's what I want to be. You know, that's a man. I want to be a man just like that. You know, my uncles were always busted. We're from the neighborhood as well. I would write them. And, you know, I would always be happy when they would come out for a little while. And then the next one would get busted. And uh, But I was just excited when I would see them because they're from the neighborhood, right? So that's what I strive to be, a gang member uh, growing up. Single household, I was trying to be a man, and I, and, and I ended up manifesting being a gangster, right? That's what I manifested. I did that. Mm -hmm. And um, that all that got me was, you know, um, lost homies, um, broken, you know, broken uh, relationship with, with family members, mm -hmm. um, addiction, and um, uh, drugs, you know, institutions, uh, mental institutions, prisons, and death, you know, from fellow... Uh, fellow homies and 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 it's just the the stereotypical gangster in the neighborhood 
is good for a minute, right? We get all the fame, and then what? We don't get a certificate because we're the baddest gangster in the SGV, right? Mm -hmm. Our certificate, our degree is going to prison. So that's actually what we want. We want to go to prison, and that's our degree. Oh, you made it to where? What prison? Oh, you're the big homie. You get this recognition, and that's yeah, like man. a badge of honor for us. Oh, yeah, the homies respect me because I've been to this prison, I've been to that prison, and I, and I control this area. So I want to be like that. Instead of going, hey, you know, I want to go to Cal State Fullerton, I want to go to Cal State Long Beach and pursue my career, I want to pr pursue my career in the prison system and advance all the way up to the top to where I can't even go out to yard or nothing. I'm just locked down 24-7. But that's our vision, right? So the little kids out there are still lost. And I just want to I wanna, um, change the narrative on a gangster because it's not bad, right? We were a gangster in the day. What's the definition of gangster? Do bad things, do, do, do drugs, and hurt our communities. Mm -hmm. Now a gangster is taking care of your family. Yeah, you may have been done that in the past. You have done bad things. Now it's changing your life around. Take care of your family, go to school and create that higher education so somebody else lost could follow your pathway to success and still represent being a G, right? Because being a G is not bad. It's what you make it. So let's promote being a G as going to school, going to college. That's yeah. gangster, right? You change yeah. your life around. Damn, you're a real G, homie. That's right. Much respect. You're still from the neighborhood. And all the little homies, if you want to follow me, this is the option too. I'm not downgrading the other Gs. I'm just saying this is another option of a G. You can follow me. Let's do it, homie. There's a lot of programs that 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 uh, allow you know reentry. There's a lot of funding in California right now for that. So why not, right? Right. And you know what? I, one it thing touches I'm, I'm a lot curious, of things. Yeah. A lot. And I'm curious to know too. Is so you were you're a single household, right? Mm. Any siblings or no? Two sisters. Two sisters. Yeah. So you're the so only, only male. Boy. I'm the yeah, only male. Only male. You really had to take that, you know, take care of them, look out. Younger sisters, I'm assuming. Older. Older so sisters. So I was the youngest boy. Yeah, I was youngest and then two older sisters and then my mom. I was raised by my mom and my grandmother. So mm -hmm. it was mostly women. Yeah. And then my uncles were always busted. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really have no male role model. So I went to the streets for that. Now, I'll go ahead. No, I, Well, I was going to kind of set up that picture. If you can maybe um, touch on what it is. For a youth growing up in Puente, figuring out life, single parent, not, not, not really having all the support that a kid would normally need, right? Yeah. Especially um, in comparison to a two-parent household. Yeah. Um, what, what was a normal day for you? Like, what was some of the stuff that a youth had to go through? A normal up? day? See, I, I hit it really well. Like, um, my family really didn't know that I was from the neighborhood because I would have to hide it because my, other, my older uncles didn't allow it. The ones that were they're like, don't let them in the neighborhood. So I kind of did it behind their back. So I did well in school. I was always doing good in school. But as soon as I would come home at nighttime, I would take off in the neighborhood and go kick it and do all the things. And my family didn't find out till after when I started to get into trouble. They're like, wait, you're from the neighborhood? Mm -hmm. And I, did, I never answered them. I still, I st we still don't talk about it today. But it's something that I had to do. I had to figure it out. Like, I want to be from that neighborhood so bad. And... And I hid it from my family. So it was like I was living two lives. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good in school. I always did good in school. I was very smart. But I was also coming home, and, and I love that gangster life. Like, yeah. I, I, lo I love the, uh, the rush. Not even the drug addiction yet. I love the rush of, of violence. Um, when I would, uh, I thought that was being a man, being violent. Like, oh, let, let's go to another neighborhood and show them that we're better than them. Yeah. That's man. I'm better than you, right? So let's go impress the bigger homies and let's go do something to our own people, right? So it, it's just, you know, a normal normal youth out there. And a normal normal day for me was was trying to, trying to hold on to both lives. Trying to hold on to the, the one that's doing good in school. And the one that's being a, a gangster in the streets. And a lot of the kids, you know, some of them don't have that option of being good and bad. Some of them, some of them are just engulfed in the life. And that's what I'm here for, to be a voice for them and let them know there's options, you know. Yeah. That's not your only way, you know. There, there's also, you could be a gangster and change the narrative of what a G is. So be a G and, and, and start going to school, you know. You could still 
do what you got to do in the neighborhood. I'm not, I'm not downgrading that, but I'm like, there's two versions of G's. What are you going to, what meaning are you going to put on being a G, you know? So let me ask you something. You said you're doing pretty good in school, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you were, are, you were a very, it seemed like you were a very smart person all the way from, the, from jump. Mm -hmm. How did you keep yourself as far as engaged in school? When did you give yourself time to do your homework? When did you give yourself time to study? Or were you one of those kids that I always get pissed off at that they hear yeah, one, they, they, they could just nothing. hear one time, they fucking know right off the bat <laughs> and they could just do it? No, I wasn't one of those kids. I was one, um, I would just like, um, I kept up with everything, you know, and I studied a lot in school. Um, and when I would come home, I would study a little bit to play off to my family. Like I wasn't doing nothing, mm. but I would actually study behind the computer and whatever. And then in the nighttime, I would do my things. So even if the homies, when I was a freshman in high school, we were deep. The neighborhood was deep at the high school. There was like 20 of us. And then as soon as I, I it, it, each year I lost a few homies. And then when it was a senior year, I was the only one left. So I was like, I graduated, but... I was kind of like alone because my homies weren't there. And I was around, the other kids didn't really associate with me because of what I did, right, in the neighborhood. And they were like, no, we don't want to be around. That's dangerous. So I was, I graduated alone, you know, and I, I, I wanted to represent and I did represent the homies that couldn't make it, right? A lot of mm -hmm. them, some of them paralyzed in the journey of high school, um, passed away. And I, I just, uh, just, it, the journey of going to school and, and also living that game is exhausting, bro. It's exhausting. And You're living I, two lives, man. Yeah, Literally living two, two lives. lives. And everything's, everything's like fake. Like I'm putting yeah. this mask on in the streets to act like I'm a gangster because that's what it is, right? We just want people to be scared of us. And I'm putting this mask on at home like, oh, look, I'm a good boy. I'm doing my work. But I couldn't. I didn't know who I was. I lost myself in the, mm. in the, in the journey. Yeah. So like it, it's, it's tough. I didn't, I didn't know... Um, I didn't know how to act because I was always being fake, being going to school and acting like I'm this good boy and then coming, I mean, going to school and, and, and being a good person. And then after school ends, I'm in the streets. Yeah. Yeah. Now. Okay. So there was never a time between the trend while, while you were like, let's say elementary high school or middle school where you ever got yourself arrested, juvenile hall or nothing like that. No, I, my journey, um, I was very, very skilled when I say I'm smart, like I was street smart. Mm. I studied my neighborhood. I knew exactly how to get away from a certain street. I know which streets were dead ends. I know I knew my enemy streets. So if I would be in the vicinity, if I was getting chased, I knew exactly how to get away. Mm -hmm. And I knew exactly who to have with me so I wouldn't get busted. So I got a, I got away a lot of times, you know, just because uh, I studied my streets. Like if I was studying the books for a class. Because it's life and death in those streets. So if I'm going to be risking my life, I'm going to make sure I'm the best at it, right? I'm going to, okay, this this person lives here. If I get caught in a chase, I could get out this street. This street's a dead end. Don't go in there because if I get caught in the dead end, they're going to catch me. So I got to know exactly survival mode, how to get out of my neighborhood. So I studied it. I studied every, all my surrounding streets. Like everybody would trip out like, dang, you know your streets really well. Yeah, because if somebody catches me slipping, I need to know how to get away because that's my life, right? Right. And and if I'm with the family member, if somebody catches us, I need to find the safest way to get out. You're so the, you know, you're I the studied hood navigator. You're the hood <laughs> navigator is what you were. Yeah, though, man. Yeah. yeah, you were smart enough to think outside that box as opposed to just going with the flow and and then getting caught up and then yeah. ending up in a crazy situation. Yeah. Um. You know what I'm thinking? You mentioned you lost a lot of homies at that early age. Right. What do you think that did to you, man? Because some people, some kids might have been like, you know what, I'm cool, I'm straight mm -hmm. on this. Mm -hmm. That we were, we're the same age, and now I don't have my boy. You know, you know, it did. At the moment when I was young, you know, all it did was make me hate the other neighborhood. Man, it, we it, hear that. We hear that. You it's know, a fifty fifty. It yeah, can go it's either, either way. Man. At that moment, you know, I was so engulfed in in the the gang culture that I was. What to, to they're not gonna do that to us? Let's go get them right now. Let's go. I'm the I'm the drive. Let's go do it. So it was it wasn't even more like you know missing the the fallen homie. It was nobody's gonna do that to us. We're we're this is our neighborhood. You're not gonna yeah. disrespect us. And now we're just making us more like wanting to get the other one, and then just just losing ourselves in that instead of like actually. Mourning the loss of the homie, right? Or mourning the loss of what happened. We're more involved in the revenge and we don't deal with what's happening because, uh, oh, yeah, we just lost a, a person, right? We lost somebody, 
But instead of mourning and helping out the family, we're more worried about hurting somebody else and having the other families lose that person and everybody loses. Nobody wins. Mm. When we go get another one, another family mourns, another one's getting busted, we all lose. So it's 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 crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. No, in between, 100%. Uh, real quick, and in between this time, like it seems like at a young age where things really just started cooking up, right? Were you participating in any kind of like drug, substance use or anything like that? Yeah, no, I started drugs. I would in, all through high school, I didn't touch Nothing. 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 Not even weed. Not even not weed. Even weed. I, not even weed. It's when I graduated high school, that first week is when I, st- I took my first hit of meth. Mm. And that's when the gang life accelerated for me because I was like, whew, like what? Like I was, I could be up all night, like, like waiting for the enemy coming. <laughs> like I'm here. What's up? Well, look, well, I'm, damn, nobody going to catch me slipping. Crazy hey, perspective. Hey, ain't yeah, nobody yeah. going to catch me slipping now. Like I'm ready. Like I'm up. I'm gonna sleep. I'm gonna stay up all night until I. And sometimes nothing would ever come, right? Because that's the drugs thinking everything's coming, but nothing's really coming. But mm-hmm. if you were gonna come, I'm gonna be ready because I'm up all night now. Mm-hmm. So I ended up um, getting, you know, having an addiction. And of course, in the beginning, oh, it's all about partying. You know, I have the drugs. I could control it, and it spiraled out of control. Where um, I ended up needing it right to just to um function and i never thought since my my uncles were addicted and both passed away from uh liver um uh, cirrhosis of the liver because of drugs mm-hmm. i when i before i took that hit i always say i'll never be like that but that one hit completely i forgot about that and i was just getting i was just like them now man, yeah. it is so scary because i hearing that, that man uh, okay. yes yeah, it's just that one time you think like and it's crazy because your parents tell you if they are offering it to you don't try it. Like, don't try it. And if you do, my dad would tell me, if you do, fake it. <laughs> Fucking put it. Just yeah. put the, like, if you're that's smoke, an option. Put it in man. your yeah. mouth yeah. and just pretend, blow it up and be like, damn, this is good stuff. And that's fucking it. Yeah. Because you never know if that first time is just going to get you fucking hooked. And, you, oh. and it, it, it can that, and spiral that was, that was it. That was it for me. And then um, after that first hit, it was years of addiction. And I just couldn't, I couldn't shake the habit until recently. About a year ago, I had a stroke. Wow. And and I was able to go to college. You know, I got my associate's degree getting nice. high every day. I'm telling the truth right no, now. there's no way. I used to get high every day going to school, mm-hmm. but I was still involved in the life. This is all recent. I'm telling you, I didn't change my life till after my stroke. You know, I was in the ICU for two weeks. Completely gone. You know, I had uh, inflammation in the brain and spine, meningitis, um, 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 um. Brain contusion, everything. And I that was the moment where my addiction was cured. We 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 definitely well, we gotta lead up to that. Cause that's yeah, like I wanna really huge. hear that. I wanna unpack that. Yeah, that's that's big. That that sounds like that's your pivot Oof, right there. That's man, your moment time. where you um so so let's kind of paint the scenario. Leading up to that, fresh out of high school, what was mom saying? You at least got the high school diploma. Right. But now she may see you. Are you still at the parents' pad? Or I'm, you still at the, I'm still at I'm still at her pad, and then I will be at my grandma's a lot, um, back and forth, okay. back and forth. I was always a grandma's boy, um, so you know we could be the biggest gangsters in the world. But grandma, oh, that's me. That's me. you know, mm. leave me alone. He's doing good, and that's it. So I would always go to my grandma's because I always had a room there. So with okay. my with my mom, I would always have to sleep in the living room or like um, share a room, and I was like, let me go to grandma's. But yeah, I would always go back and forth. But my mom, you know, I don't really know. You know, I'm pretty sure she noticed. It's just that when I when I first started getting high, I was never home, so she would never see uh, like my problem. I would come home, you know, shower and then leave, and then. But I I kind of hit it good because I was still going to school. So no, you're still going to school. You're getting financial aid. You're getting good grades. So everything must be fine, you know. Yeah. So you just staying up all night just to do work. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you know what? <laughs> You're like, oh, hey, hey, uh, my yeah. son, go, he's in there hitting them books. <laughs> you can catch. He's if the, he stays up late. He's, yeah. He's doing his stuff. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. He's getting these good grades. I was even. I even got a, a scholarship. Wow. Getting, that is and, incredible. And, and on my yeah. award ceremony, I look totally. I used to shave my head and everything. On the award ceremony scholarship at Mount Sac, I look at my picture and, yeah, I was up there with the this. Uh, um, scholarship, but you could see in my eyes that I was hurting, and I only I could see that right now that I look back, my eyes look so dark, just like man, like somebody crying for help, you know. And 
that's one thing I would never do is cry for help because I didn't want them to think that I was doing bad because I was hiding it. So I just got a scholarship. How can I ask for help? You know what I mean? I'm doing good. If 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 I if I admit I have a problem, then maybe I have to go to rehab. And then that's going to stop my progression in school. And I don't want to do that. Did you maybe, and I'm sorry to cut you off, did you maybe even start try to convince yourself, like, maybe it is okay I'm doing this because oh, yeah, me. Oh, I'm yeah. I thought, okay. you know, yeah. I thought okay, I was going to do I it for that. life. You know what? I thought, you know, I could do, I could do this. I could, if I'm doing it. I'm, I'm doing good still getting high. I could still do this. And I remember one time, you know, I was so exhausted with everything. And I just prayed one night because I never wanted my addiction to go away because I like to get high, right? That mm, feeling of high. Yeah. It made me it made me smarter, supposedly. So one night I was so tired that I actually prayed, you know, God, please take this addiction from me. And then, you know, and my answer, my prayers were answered through the stroke. It's crazy. And now my addiction is had I haven't been uh high since my stroke. So like my prayers were answered, but something that almost killed me, you know, some, some people never come back from that. Yeah. Why did I, you know, what, what, what's the, my purpose? You know, I should uh -huh. be brain dead. I should be dead, brain dead or in a wheelchair. My mom was already getting ready to, uh, to, um, quit her job to take care of me. You know, the doctor is telling her he's not looking good. He's in the ICU. I couldn't even get up to go to the restroom. They had alarms on me. I couldn't, I couldn't walk by myself. And I thought I was in the regular hospital. Until I came home, they're like, no, you're in the ICU, bro. Like, what? Me? And then that's when it, I, my memory started to come back. I had no memory of nothing. And then I'm like, man, what the heck happened? From moment, one moment, I was in school. And then the next moment, I'm in my living room coming home from the hospital. What happened? Damn. So there's even in between, let's say even before that, because that's such a big factor. Like, this, <laughs> that was your turning point. Usually incarceration is someone's turning point. Yeah. And you didn't get any of that. You didn't get an incarceration experience to an extent, right? I, well, I was in prison, um, For, I, I, but but not not as a youth. Not Right, not as a youth, yeah. as an adult, right. So even before that, because even if you went to prison, assuming you take that time, you get out, a lot of people think, are oh, you going to get clean? You're going to do your thing? But that wasn't it. No. It was until you had a stroke, right? Near yeah. Near death experience. When did you get incarcerated? I got incarcerated in 2011, and then I did three years. Did three that years. That was your first time? Yeah. Okay. First, first, well, I was in and out of, of jail, uh, the, county the county jail. or something? Okay. County jail, and then my first prison term was a 211 robbery. Um, you know, I was facing 12 years gang enhancement. Um, mm. 10, 10 years for the gang enhancement, two years for the, three, two years for the robbery. And then I, I don't know how the gang enhancement dropped, so they ended, ended up offering me, you know, um, three years. So I took the three. And um, that that time in incarcerated, um, it did work. Yeah, I'm not saying you know it made me worse. Right. It made it did work because I realized that's not what I wanted. Like I'm not. I don't want to be controlled every day. I don't want people telling me to, what what time to wake up, what time to do this, and I don't want telling me people t people telling me what to do. Right. The hey, the irony there, right? You you people in the street carry out that are living the lifestyle. If you do everything contrary to what you're supposed to do, you don't listen. You you you're breaking the law. You're doing all that, and then you get busted, and you realize you're gonna have to do the complete opposite. Now you're gonna pay attention, and you're it's gonna crazy. listen. And, yes, no, um, it's it's very it's very dangerous in there, and it one moment everything could be fine, and the next moment because of somebody else's actions, we could all be messed up. Yeah. So yeah. it's always watching other people making, I hope they act right. You know, I hope today's a good day. And I and I have to watch myself. The way I got through it in prison is, you know, we all have to listen, uh, to, listen to somebody. So the way I would get through my time is I would just work out all day. Work out, constantly work out. Just in case something happened, I knew I was in the best physical shape to defend myself. Because we all know in prison, it's all no holds barred, right? So if anything happens, I want to make sure that I'm physically able to protect myself in case anything happens. And there's been many times when, when we're supposed to be asleep and there's tension between, you know, racial tension, whatever. And we can't sleep because we have to watch over, like, the next one, like, if he's going to come and get me. So having to go to sleep like that in prison, 
makes you appreciate being home uh-huh. in your own bed. Like, mm-hmm. man, I could just close my door and just, man, this this is what it is. But in there, you're like, I don't know what the other man's thinking. And since there's tension, I can't even go to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? No, that's not saving. And, and, and how did that work uh, or what effect did that have on your sobriety? Did, did you get sober during that time because you were busted? In prison, no. Um, I was more sober, okay. but um, I would dabble into it. I remember, you know, walking in the middle of the night, and uh, I remember I went to the restroom. It was through all the bunks and stuff. I went to the restroom and walking back, and I seen uh, some, you know, like a group of guys, you know, getting high in the in in the little cut. And I'm like, "What? You have a lighter in here?" That's the first time I tripped out. You have a a pipe, a homemade pipe. You have whatever. You have drugs. Oh man! And then you know, hey, come here. You want? And then just a little. And pff, there I was again. I was just like, "Fuck, man!" You know, it takes me back. And I'm like, I didn't expect it to be there like that. Yeah. Like all oh, just smoking, like right there, like in the little cut. Like if they're in the streets, you know, a little fan blowing the smoke that way. I was just like, "What the heck?" It's crazy. <laughs> so as, as I did that, you know, I I didn't um um go out, get out of hand with it, um, but it's still. Like halt, halted my sobriety completely. Instead of coming home completely sober, I was dabbling every now and then. Uh, so when I came home, I was just like, I still had that urge because I got high a few months ago. And then I would get high every couple months. So I came home with that same mentality of, oh, now it's about that time. Now mm-hmm. it's about that time, you know, because I was used to it in there. You know, when, when everybody, when, when the drugs hit the yard, pass it out to everybody. Why? Because it's money, you know? If, if we pass yeah, it out to everybody, yeah. they're going to want more and they're going to buy more. They're going to make them rich. More money. So they would get everybody, you know? And of course, you know, when you're in prison, you want to forget. And a lot of the times getting high is just because we want to forget that we're in prison. Right? Or let, 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 let's, just, uh, let, let's just try to forget it. And sometimes, you know, you put on your headphones, you put on a good song, and you feel like you're back in the streets when you're loaded. So that's what the the escape for that moment, you know. Mm. But and when I came home, I wasn't completely uh, recovered because I was dabbling into it with them, you know, mm, in, in right. prison. So I wish, I wish I was completely, but it, it I wasn't. So I still had that urge, like, oh, you know, I'm still gonna dabble into it, and I can't wait to get that the the drugs on the streets because I know it's way better than the stuff in the prison. That was my mentality. Now, now that prison case that that was uh, the two eleven. Yeah, two eleven. Okay. What uh what was that experience like as far as like getting caught up like were you I'm 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 assuming you were probably like high as fuck probably um, during no that. I was I was wanting to uh. yeah I was wanting to like the whole reason why that happened was because you know trying to get money mm-hmm. trying to get money and um so it was just like okay how am I gonna get high now and, and I used to that rob you know robberies is addicting in itself because you get that money fast. Mm. So if you come up on a, on, on a robbery and you have a couple hundred, uh, even a thousand on that one, you think you're going to get that every time. And if you don't, you're going to work until you get that every time. And you know you're strategic. Okay, Friday, people get paid. They're coming out of their check cashing place. Let me, let's hit them in the, in the alley right there when they least expect it because you know they have cash. So it's all strategic. So I, was, I learned, you know, me and my couple group, we, we had a, you know, a game plan on when to do it. But it eventually, you know, you get so used to it and you get so um, accustomed to it that you rely on it. Now, we don't we're trying to get jobs because we could just go ahead and lick and get $1,000 right now. Somebody just got paid, right? So, but that's how far the addiction took me mm-hmm. was robbing. And I didn't even know it at the time. Like, I was robbing just to keep myself awake high. Crazy. At the moment, I would never admit that. No, I could control it. And it's never going to have me. Of course, yeah. Not me. Yeah. See, it doesn't seem real. You're like, nah, I'm not one of those dudes. I'm not, you know. Exactly. Yeah. No, I could control it. What were you uh, studying at? Uh, you you're going to Malsac, right? Yeah. What were you studying there? Um, uh, criminal justice, uh, administration of justice. What was your goal with that? Like, uh, what did you want to do? Or um, do well, you... see, I st- I first. Which is ironic, by the way. Because, yes. Because you know, it's like yes, you know, criminal justice. I first I first um started studying it with the intention of going in the jails and being corrupt. That was my first, because I wasn't... That was the reason I why. wasn't... Uh, I was 
so about the neighborhood mm. that I was like, you know what? If I make it in there, I could help out the homies. That's crazy. Right? So I had a whole... I'm so glad that I didn't get my associate's degree before I changed, right? Um, Because I would I would have been caught up. I would have been in there, okay, let me put, let me bring this in for the homies or let me make this money, this couple thousand, and then what? Get caught. And then now I'm in there. So now I, I, I changed my, my direction of now I want to go back in the prisons, but as a positive, right? Mm, yep. A positive thing, you know. I was able to to get my violent felony fully expunged completely uh, recently oh, nice. out of Pomona Superior. Um, Rising Scholars Mount SAC is a is a program for um, previously incarcerated students. Dr. Right. Joe Lewis is has our back completely, and he was there as well as a couple other people of the program. Backing me up, and my the same judge that sentenced me was the one that did my expungement. And he goes, you know, he read my thing, and he goes, you know, it's it's I love to see success stories. Yeah, and you know, this is it. You know, completely expunged. Bam, took three minutes. I came out, and then you know, bam, it happened. I was so I had so much trauma about being in courtrooms that I didn't take it in at the moment. I was like, I'm trying to get out of here before they try to refile or whatever. <laughs> you never know. They or find before right. they try so to they you refile yeah. on that yeah. robbery that I did. <laughs> uh, hopefully they forgot about it. But I was just, I was so yeah. traumatized by the courtroom that I didn't. And at, at that time, I, I, when I got it expunged, I had just got my, I mean, when I, when I got it expunged, I just had the stroke. So I wasn't fully there. Like mm. I was just like, Going through the motions, like okay, I'm here. I would, I, I would get lost everywhere. I was. It took me forever to find the courtroom because I just wasn't there, and it didn't hit me until like a, a, a couple months ago, when I got the paperwork saying your everything was dismissed, and I was like, what? Crazy. So, man. so real quick, just to get the timeline right, that's re fairly recent. Then. The stroke. Okay, yeah. and then, so the pr first prison term happened in your twenties. Yeah, twenty. So and then 20s? it was twenty six. And then I got out when I was 30. So like tw almost 27 and I got out when Okay, I was so you did a big stretch then, yeah. a good little stretch. That's a good yeah. stretch. You lose it all. And, and it was just them, enough yeah. to get me to change. Got you. Got it was you. just enough. Like, because, you know, years go by, people pass away. You can't say bye. Those moments is like, damn, I put myself in here and I can't even say bye to the people that mm. are hurting. That's what changed me. So at that point, from that one prison sentence, you stopped the kind of like the gang act life. But the drug life was still an issue for you? The the I was more focused on just not getting busted again. Got you. So I was staying I, out the way a little yeah, bit. Yeah, staying out the way yeah. still involved. Yeah, yeah. But like, you know, I ain't go I ain't going in the streets. If you want to come, you come to me. <laughs> I was I just yeah, wasn't yeah. gonna put myself out there because I was already on the gang file and I was already known by the by the cops. So come to me, you know, I being on parole, yeah, man, my that. house got raided so many times. Um Putting and just putting my family in that, you know, people with guns coming on random searches. They gotta take out everybody. They search everything. They throw everything around. Having your mom on the floor, uh, the the dogs Crazy. like get your dog on. I'm gonna shoot them. And we're just like, just for a random search because you know when you're on parole, you're still considered state or property of the state, yeah. right? So they could come and search whenever. But that's so sad when you see your family on the floor, you know, when they have their day off. And then they just want to decide to, to, but you know, that's part of the process where I said, you know, I, that's it. I don't want this, you know, now it's not just my actions that are affecting, you know, no, it, it is my action, not just affecting me. Now it's affecting my family, you know, mm -hmm. like now my mom has to be waking up on her Literally, day off yeah. by um, the whole police department. I remember it was the industry sheriffs and the West Covina because we live on the border. So it was both helicopter calling my name out. I was just like. What's it? The random search, the parole sweep. We do this to everybody. So that it is bad, but you know, it kind of made me not want to get in trouble. You know, just I don't want to put my my family in that. You know, that's nuts. They they do they do it that big, even though it's, it was like just a sweep, just a sweep. Yeah, that's normal nuts. sweep. And then you know they took me to the the county, um, and then just let release me like a couple of days later. Like oh, you know, like we don't care if you have a job or nothing. You're probably gonna lose your job. Because we did the sweep, but oh, it's just random. We just want to make sure you don't have nothing. I was just like, okay, you know, in in all reality, it's my fault. Because I chose to be on parole. I chose to do that robbery. So I started taking accountability for myself. You know what? It's not the cop's fault. They're just doing their job. They're getting this, okay, these are the houses we have to. If I would never been busted, I would never be on parole. Mm -hmm. Right? So I have to take accountability. Like, 
hey, you know, let it is your fault, but we could get over this and discharge parole, which I did finally. I was on high control parole. Uh, they would, I would see them. Uh, I would, I would have to go twice a month to test, and they would come come to the house extra because it was on high control, and I was just so, and I was able, you know, to discharge finally. Man, that was such a a what, burden. What, what, so you carried that on into your thirties. Um, the high, the see, since when. I was on high control pro for three years. So when I got out, I was what, uh, 27, 20, uh, 29, 30. And then um, I was on high control pro for three years. Three yeah, years three of that. Years, yeah. I was exhausted. How often are they doing all that? Like, it's just like. They do it. Um, They do it once in a while. Um, And it's it's funny because when I had my phone off, my phone had died when they were doing their searches on the other side of the neighborhood. And when I came out, I seen texts like, hey, homie, be careful. You're, you're, yeah. They're doing sweeps. But my phone was off. So I'm like, oh, man, you know, um, the homies were already getting hit. So when I got busted, I seen a bunch of my homies at the same station. So, but it, it's, it's, they're all, they're do, always doing that. Always doing it. It's like maybe the, the choose it like every six months, they'll do one major sweep of one side of the neighborhood. And then the mm. next six months, the whole, everybody on parole on this area one by one, bam, 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 bam. And so you see everybody busted at the station, not even for having anything, just for investigation. While while they're doing the investigation, you got to stay at the station. And then sometimes it, it, yeah. they ship you to Wayside. It's a, it's a journey, man. Yeah. This sounds like one shit. <laughs> I mean, um, so now with, with that being said too, now you, you come out, you're, you're getting out of, you, you get out being incarcerated, you're doing everything. You're still trying to, you know, get away, push away from this addiction. Um, what is mom seeking during all this too? Because you even have mom here to support you today. Yeah, no, which my... is crazy because that's like from okay, everything man, that that's you beautiful. Have, yeah, yeah, like from everything you have going on, like mom is here today. Yeah, no, so I wish I wish I she could be able to speak, but she doesn't want to. But um, <laughs> I put her through so much, and and what's recently what she's told me, and she because she sees my change, and she goes, Jason, I prayed that you would change. And now my answer, my prayers are being answered. And I was like, what, you prayed for me? Like, just to think someone's prayers out there. Yeah. And what, you prayed for me? But I used to, man, people in and out of the house, a uh, whole room filled up with like 15 people partying, drinking, smoking. What, she has to go to work every day. Because of you? Because, because you were bringing that to the house? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. I was bringing that. I was, I was, I love to party. That was also an addiction in itself. I loved the the scene. I I, I just loved it, and I was so um, I I I didn't think of you know, hey, my mom has to go to work, you know. But um, you know, now now that I changed my life, I'm telling you, you know, now I'm glad that you could rest. Now you could rest, and she's like, yeah, I know. Um, I'm so glad you you changed, but I used to pray for you, but you know, I tell her everything that I'm doing now. Is your prayers being answered? I go to church now. I never went to church, but you know, it takes a life and death experience for you to realize the meaning of life, right? Mm. So now, you know, I put I put my mom through a lot, but I appreciate, you know, she's the one that drove me here, right? She's still there after all that okay. stuff. Yeah. So um appreciate her and everything I do is is, is to give her peace now. Cause you know, she had a hard life too, right? It wasn't just me. Like no, yeah, it was like actions, her growing up was yeah. crazy too. Like she been overcame a lot, and now she has to deal with a son after she overcame uh, uh, domestic situations growing up as a young as a young woman. Now she overcame that, and now a son is in the streets, gang banging, shootouts, coming home. I remember used to come home with. Um, my head gash, blood all over, going to the hospital, broken nose. And she's like, what is going on? So now I'm so glad that I could give her that peace. I go to sleep now, right? Right. <laughs> I go to sleep. Now she's like, okay, that, I go yeah. to sleep early. She's like, okay, good. Everything's good. Like, um, I'm able to bring her with me here. Um, and, and little things that I accomplish, award ceremonies now, she's there with me, like, now I could try to make up for it, but you know I did put her through a lot, and I big shout out to all the moms out there, and shout out to my mom. You know she's amazing. She's here. She 100%. still works every day. She still go wakes up, and I just want to give a shout out to my grandma as well. She passed away, um, 
she had dementia, my grandma, and then she pa- I took care of her, changed her diapers and everything while I was in my addiction. Mm. Let me let me I know this is a little much, but while I was taking care of my grandma, that's when COVID was coming. She had dementia, so I used to change her diapers and everything. When COVID came, I had to stop having my homies over. That's what changed my life. COVID, because I was like, you know what? I can't have nobody over no more because they could kill her, like just by them being yeah. infected, right? So I cut my homies off during COVID because my grandma was already on hospice and everything, and she, you know, and I used to change her diapers before that too. So that's what changed my life was was having to take care of my grandma. And COVID was around; I couldn't have my homies. That's when I first started losing, losing the, um, loosening up the, the game ties. part, like yes. the pulling from the ties. That's when it first so, started. So, so from the age of like thirty three, when you got off parole, you still kind of maintained that lifestyle till, till yeah. about about COVID, a year about ago. COVID, yeah. Damn. So you, so how old are you now? If you don't mind me asking, I'm thirty six. Thirty six. So you had a good run then. A, a good, good run. run. A good run. And that, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm tripping out. Like, man, I did a lot of drugs. Like. And the fact that I'm able to talk to you guys yes. is a blessing. Crazy. Like I'm blessing. I'm not I'm not like you know in a wheelchair. I'm like uh, completely like alert. Man, that's crazy. I want to start getting into that. Yeah, yeah. Let's so 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 you you you're kind of still going through the madness upon finishing parole. It doesn't really get better, right? Because you're you you do not get busted, but you're still getting high, you're living that yeah. lifestyle, and yeah. things are cool because it's isolated. It's yes. in the pad, you you got um Take us up to those moments where you started. So you mentioned COVID as being one of them and grandma hospice, right? Yeah. Um, kind of take us from there and kind of what that let, you know, how did that keep unrolling? And then did that lead up to the moment of the stroke and all that? Or, or the, how did my th- grandma passing, she passed. Well, after she passed, I had the stroke a little after. Uh, um, uh, um, so like I was grieving and the way I was, the way I was masking my grieving was getting high. So that just you ramped it up after I that? ramped it up. That I, right? I, I was Man, I had sucks. to stop going to school. I had to um, take some time off, and then, you know, I, I had to completely disengage with everything. And then I just you know I just fell apart. You know, I, I was failing everything, and then um, my grandma, you know, was a big huge part of my life. And I, and I, you know, I feel like her death was the birth of new me. The new me, slowly. Mm. Like, so, right? Yeah. She had to pass away, but she gave me the skills that she she brought me up with that I still hold with me today. And um, it, it was, a, 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 I was able to walk in the, well, well, I was able to graduate at Mount Sac with my associates while she was on hospice. Still getting high, right? I don't tell everybody that. That's between everybody now, but you know, people don't know that I was battling all that. You know, my she passed away and I was still trying to mask it and I was still able to get my associates. So I was able, I was able to walk and everything. But I like a few weeks later after she passed away, um uh uh that's when I, you know, really, really just Try. I, I I was getting high a lot, you know, and then I just had the stroke. So so, what was that like? What was that like? What was right. the madness like? What was something that you? What were those things that you were going through? What was it? Getting high to that point was it? You were shaking up five days, and you knew you were tripping. You knew you were wrong. Like this shit was about to go over the hill. You were you were about to pass a hurdle where you probably couldn't come back. And and as a result, you know. Yeah. You, no, I would just um, I remember. I was, my grandma had passed away and then I reached out to, um, I was like, how am I going to, how am I going to get through this? Yes, I got to yes. figure out like, what am I going to do? Like, I have to reach out. So I reached out to Project Hope. That's a nonprofit organization in Pomona. Mm-hmm. And Project Hope ended up um, being a huge part of my life. Um, I ended up getting yeah. hired as a, um, I volunteered for a whole year. Volunteered righteously. Every every day for a whole year, and then they found a way to hire me. And while I had my stroke, I was working there. So um, I've created a, a good bond with them, and they seen the transformation from someone who was getting high to someone who's not high no more, but it has a disability now, right, from the stroke. 
So they're like, man, they call me Bugs. Boogie, because I like to dance. Anyways. That's right. But, <laughs> but uh, uh, this guy does too. You see a, ra- a battle. <laughs> let's get it. Come on. Go. Joe boy, bro. Yeah, man, so, that, so they, seen, they seen the addicted me, and they seen the me now. And they're like, man, that's a huge change, you know, like mm-hmm. that's big. And they would go see me uh, in the ICU when I was in there. Big shout out to the Rising Scholars um, program at Mount Sac, previously incarcerated shout people, out. Project Hope. Uh, you know, it's just, it, my story has so much, it's hard for me to focus on one thing, okay. right? So I'm kind of going everywhere, but I, I, I just want to uh, uh, tell everyone, you know, just, um, you know, everybody's journey is supposed to happen. Things are supposed to happen to teach you lessons, right? Not, it's, it, bad things happen, but it also teaches you what not to do next. Right. Now that I know I've been through that bad experience, it's up to me not to make that same mistake. Mm-hmm. So, so Jay, t- take us to maybe the week of of the day of the stroke mm-hmm. or a couple days before. Yeah. What was that looking like? You were you were just oh, oh. no, and, I was um. I was going through it. I had just came back from, um, I did a plane trip and I had just came back from Washington because they were doing the collegiate recovery program, right? Mm. Which is ironic because I was still in my addiction, but I was still trying to find a way to reach out, right? So I, I take a plane trip and when I was up there at elevation, I had this worst pain in my head. Like, you know, how have you been on a plane? Yeah, yeah. You know when you get in high elevation, the air pressure is high, right? Changes, yep. My blood pressure was so high that it kicked off like something. I was I was so um so hurt. I was like, what the heck is that? I was hurting silently. I wanted to scream. So that that when I came back from that plane trip, uh, a couple of days later, um, I had that stroke. And what, what what was that though? Like where were you at? What was that moment leading up to it? Did you was it a shake? Is it no, a- I was in a I was in my room and I don't remember nothing. I, I remember mm, my mom said I was it. in my room for two days and with the door locked. And she's right. like, they finally had to break in the door. And she said I was I was against the, the dresser, like, like disoriented, like what? And then she's like, no, we have to call the ambulance. So they called the ambulance. I'm just saying this from what she, I don't remember anything. Gotcha. They called the ambulance and um that's when I, my journey started with the being in the ICU and then all this this crazy stuff, but I don't remember. That's but that's what's scary. That okay. is, that's very scary for you to be in a room locked for two days straight and there's no contact. It's yeah. nuts. But were you getting high in the room and yes. that's so you were getting yes. very high in the room. Yes. And eventually you were just. I remember I had an event. I forgot which event for school. And you know my my thing was you know just stay up all night and and make sure you, my job's done and my my. Paperwork's done. Yeah. And my body... So that was your thing? You know, most dudes, when they get high, they break apart the microwave. <laughs> so your thing was you had schoolwork, yeah. work, work you yeah. could really lose yes. time in. And I can see where it's fucked up, but it, it kind of helped you in a, in a way. Yes. It kind that's of, why, yeah. That's man, why I tell it's people... It's weird that it's two bad things. It's a <laughs> bad thing and a good thing, you I know? tell people, like, when I used to get high, like, I was... I could get anything. Like, I write a paper, like, on that, but perfect. And now after my disability, now after I have a stroke on uh, memory problems, it's a struggle, bro. Like even in the school, I'm part of the disabilities program. And it's still hard. And I'm like, what? I'm not used to this. It's because I was relying on the drug. Uh-huh. And it wasn't me, you know, that was that drug making me smart. It wasn't my true self. So I think that needed to happen so I could rely on myself. Because mm-hmm. I'm going to be, what am I going to be? If I make it to 60, like... Oh, I'm just gonna get high before I do my work. <laughs> like, like uh, it's not sustainable. Not no, sustainable. it's not. Yeah. So that was the moment where I was. It needed to happen to be like, okay, this is it. Like, you know how to do good. Stop doing drugs. If you know how to do everything else in this world, stop doing drugs. This is killing you. Yeah, you're you're able to get your associate. You're able to get the scholarships, but your house is deteriorating. What's the use of all these degrees and all these things that you certificates if you're not going to be here to experience it? Like, I'm just like, Oof, man. It's so lot, that that lot, catapulted yeah. me. That's true. Even though I have problems now, you know, even like finding places, finding here, that's why I brought my mom because I'm trying to get lost. But it's a blessing to be able to get lost, right? Because I'm alive. You're here. And I'm right. able to navigate, like, right? Yeah, you, and I, I like that you, you turn it into a positive, man. It's, it's a negative. People would think like, 
it's fucked up. I can't do shit anymore. <laughs> but you're thinking of it in a positive way. Thank God I'm still here yeah. and I'm able to live. Come on. Um, you know, it's it, it, it is crazy. It, what what would you say are the after effects and the symptoms that you now have from the addiction? The addiction is uh, like the after the post. And and, now, and did they tell you the the stroke was a result of getting high? It oh, was a great question. It was the the of uh, the of uh, when my blood pressure was and my cholesterol is what kicked it off. But the drugs is what elevates that, right? And having okay. a, a a healthy diet of drugs all my life is just it was it. Mm-hmm. My body's like this is it. Like I can't Damn. take it no more. Yeah, you're doing good in school, but you're not going to be here to enjoy it. So let's put this Let's have this stroke so you could start from the bottom and start learning again. And I literally was at the gym when I first, uh, two weeks after, I was on the couch for two weeks. And I started going to the gym, walking slow, barely walking. And now I'm fast, but it, that's where it took me, back to the bottom, because there's no way else but to go up. I was like, okay, this is the day one. Day one of me being sober, you know, day one of, of me being me. So I had to realize, you know, at first from that stroke, I hated looking at myself in the mirror. What? Because of the results? Yeah. Of the the, no, it, um, just something burned out in my head where I seen myself disoriented. So gotcha. I started doing these videos, which I got great at because I hated looking at myself. So I forced myself to stare at my videos and watch them. You're going to be okay with who you are. This is who I am. And that actually would I started my gift of doing videos. Like now I'm inspiration. But it took that stroke for me to find my voice because, yeah, I was doing good in school, but I would be quiet, right? I'd be like, yeah, okay, let's go. Let's go through the motions. Oh, thank you. Bye. I'll be back later. I'm going to the restroom. Now it's like, yeah, what's going on? Let's, let's go to office hours. Let's go, let's go study. Let's go to a Starbucks and study. Now it's completely different. That makes sense, man. I can see that where it's a complete also, you know, to your real personality. It's yes. not masked by the drugs no more. Yeah, no, this right. is me, um, you know. I had to I had to be okay with looking at myself. I, I thought I was all like distorted looking like a monster. So I forced myself to be like, this is you, man. And then I started getting good at it. And then I started, you know, to try to uplift others because I know every day very... Very hard, even when we wake up. Sometimes we wake up in a bad mood, and I try to send my videos out in the morning. So when you're having a bad day, yeah. shoot on that video, and that's going to change your, your direction. Because positivity can change your direction, and so can negativity. Somebody could say, man, you look ugly today. And that completely that could completely change my direction. But if somebody says, damn, you look handsome today. You look good. Where did you get that shirt? That can also change somebody's direction in a positive way. Just like there's negative... There's positive to to counteract that, so I'm there trying to That's to man. to engulf everybody and to to load everybody up with positivity because the world is coming at them. <laughs> yeah, hey, let me. I, I, I've been seeing this real quick. I want to see what's what's the tat on your arm right there. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> that one? Is oh. that a mermaid? What is that? It's just uh, when I was in I was in a uh, prison. One of my sallies was my homie, right? And uh, he 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 got down on tech. We were on lockdown, and then um. We we just got a bunch of um, magazine females. Maxim uh, magazine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, the Maxim. <laughs> there you go. And we just um put them on. This was all done um by my Sally from my neighborhood. Um, we were on lockdown, and he's like, "Let me touch up." I'm like, "Okay, go ahead." <laughs> and this stuff it was done when you were younger, or like more so the all other, this, the other arm. Oh, this every uh the only thing that was done out here was the music notes. Everything else was in prison. Mm. The music notes were done out here, and then uh. All this was done in prison. The best artists are in there. Yeah. yeah. Woo! And it's, you know, if you have a Sally that's from your neighborhood, it's free. You don't have to pay like you don't gotta bucks. pay. <laughs> you know? That's even better, huh? <laughs> yep. Hey, hey, um, so I, you know what I'm thinking too is like, did did how many like did you ever had what were your moments of sobriety like prior to the stroke? Did you did you ever stop getting high or was the stroke literally the first time where you clear? The stro- the first time was and after how long? That stroke. And how long? Um, last, uh, it has, it's only been a little more than a year. Um, but what about from the prior to the stroke? So the, the lead up to the stroke, you had a bunch of time, uh, just years of never being never, sober? Never, never. Until when I was 18, after I graduated high school, it was off to the races. Damn, that's madness. That's a lot Every of... day for how many years? Yeah, 16, yeah. 15? I can't believe it now. Like, now that I'm sober, like, I'm like, man, I... 
I I would never want to admit that before. Correct. Because no, I'm not digging. Yeah, I'm doing this on my own. But no, now I look back at it and like all the when you're I think when we're high, it it kind of like numbs us, numbs the time to where everything everything's like one long moment. Instead of like a years, it's just like well, it's not that long. It's like, but now that I look back, years of of just getting high every every day, every day. Mm-hmm. Not the only oh. time that I wasn't high was when I was asleep, and then I will wake up and there goes the journey. I need to get high so I could go to school and do my assignments. That was my my my. Right, so I, right. if if so, I'll be like, I have a I have a big assignment coming up. I gotta make sure I pick up at least an eight ball. <laughs> that's, damn, <laughs> an eight ball. Right? Uh, and, that's a paper, even, huh? and, and that's not even like I still gotta pick up more after because I already went through it so fast. Yeah, that's so so that is a it, real yes, addiction. Yeah, a lot man. of money. Like now now I realize how much. Imagine how much money I spent throughout the years. What, what were you doing for work? The work I would always um go to school. Well, I would get financial aid and then um I would just like um hustle. Also in the streets, robberies. Oh, right. Okay. okay robberies. Okay. Robberies. Damn, no, that's nuts, man. I mean, it, it sucks to say, you know, the stroke was a was a blessing. Ooh, yeah. man, blessing in disguise. Yeah. Like, wow. for real. So now, so now you're out, or not, not you're out, but now you're recovering from a stroke. You say things are changing, right? Yeah. What, what, what things are changing? What steps are you taking? Oh, man. Now I was able to, we're starting a, a it's ironic that it's a recovery program at Mount Sac. Um. It's for students who suffer from uh, addiction or have suffered from addiction in the past or have or an ally of addiction where they have friends that are suffered from addiction. Mm-hmm. So we were able to bring a program to Mount Sac called the We Rise Club. Just got recognized as the club president speaking to him. Come on, somebody. Hey, man. Come Let's on, you it. know, and um, I was able to bring that with my group as someone finally in recovery. Now I could speak from experience like not someone that's okay he's loaded talking a good one on a good one no he's loaded no he's he's not loaded talking from experience you know like this is what addiction is going to lead to yeah you're going to do good for a while you but you're going to lose a lot of things but you can also lose your life and i'm so grateful that i'm still here but not everybody could say that right somebody that's because street knowledge is a degree in itself Yes. Just that is a degree because a lot of the people that have book smarts don't have that street knowledge. So they need us to come to fully like investigate things and truly like, like um, scale things like what works and what doesn't. We need the street people with the college people to work together. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to bring that street knowledge in with my with my degree knowledge to finally like bridge that gap. I love go. that. man. Come on. I love that. Yeah. I love <laughs> that. Go, man. That's. Um... It's touching for real. It's touching, and thanks. Shout out to to Mount Sac for having some shit like that. Like, come on, these are the things that now that we, you know, maybe the audience now knows. Like, because Mount Sac has has it, maybe there's other schools that have it. Y'all need that, yeah. And I love the idea that they don't just cater to people who have a, an abuse, but also people who have known someone close have had an abuse, yeah. Because that's another trauma in itself. And I'm wondering. Like the trauma that your mom has from that kind of stuff too, yes. because that's just a whole nother level for her too. Yeah, her own son, her own blood, her own baby, like having an addiction and wanting to do so much for her for the son, but at the end of the day, it's like there's only so little she could deteriorating do. Deteriorating right in front of her eyes, you know. Like I'm pretty sure, like she knew, but I was I was able to mask it with my success. So I can't even when she would say something, I'm like, but I'm doing this. But I got this degree. Yeah, it's You're like right? she can say, it's, but like, oh, I, at least yeah. I know he's yeah. still going yeah. to school. At least I yeah. know that he's still getting his shit done. Yeah. At least, and that, it's it's fucked up. It it's is, bro. Up. I've heard people, I've heard people too, where they tell me about their siblings, like, you know, they started they started smoking weed and this and this. And I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. And they're like, yeah, but I told them, look, if you're going to be doing that shit, at least get your shit right. Yeah. And have your school. Don't be a bum. Like, don't be smoking weed like a bum. I'm like, even then that sounds bad. Yeah. Like, just don't do it in general. It, it, like, you know, oh. some people would tell me, like, you know what? At least you're not in the streets. At least you're not homeless with your addiction. And that kind of made me feel better. Oh, yeah, at least I ain't homeless. At least I'm able to control it, which I couldn't. But I was able to to, to mold it around my school. 
Yeah. Like, I got high, but I that made sure it. I did my schoolwork. You, you knew you got to stay in school as long as you can. <laughs> you <laughs> so knew, I, I'm, I'm you knew you got to stretch out <laughs> as long as you <laughs> fucking can. The financial aid, oh, the financial aid was also, you know, yeah. uh, coming in. So I knew I had that money. So if I would do better in school, stay up all night, do good on the, I'll get more money. Mm, it's, it's a hustle. It's a crazy mindset. You, it's you, a hustle. I'll be get that yeah. like $3,000, $4,000 financial aid, you know, and then the scholarship money. Woo! Let's go. It's like you think you're hustling, you're making it, you're you're fucking the system over. Yeah, like the digging day. your hole. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. You're, hustling, digging. you're hustling yourself, my guy. We're digging like, like we're are... not. We're, I think I'm coming over on these things, and yeah. I'm just digging my own hole. Yeah. I have my shovel in my hand while I'm on the computer, <laughs> <laughs> and little do I know I could fit in it now. Yeah, man, it's crazy. Right? That's the cold part. I realize that you're like, man, I did this. You Oof. mentioned earlier, uh, uh, you now have uh, the church in your life too. Yes. So, how did that go about? Um, shout out to Victory Outreach West Covina. That's been a, um, a huge part of my. Damn, my um, boy just banged on the church, right? <laughs> <laughs> Victory <laughs> Outreach, come on. <laughs> Though, um, you know, that's been. I remember um, when I started to recover from my stroke. I was like, okay, now I have a lot of emptiness in my. Mm. In my, because I don't have that addiction now. What am I gonna, what am I gonna involve in my life? So I just googled the the nearest church, and I f- first went to one that I didn't really like. So the next Sunday, I'm like, okay, I'm googling, and then the next one came in, and it was Victory Outreach. And ever since that day, I never left, never That's left. Beautiful. You know, and somebody told me when I was asking questions, like, what time? I told somebody outside of the church, what time do you guys have your services? They told me the time, and they said something very simple. That caught me. They said, God bless you. And it felt good. I'm like, what? Why does that feel so good? So my, I, ever since then, I, was, I haven't left. That's good, Just that man. simple phrase, God bless you. I'm like, what? Whoa, that felt good. I'm like, okay, I'm going to come get some more. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing, though. You found something. And, yeah. and, and that's different for everybody, but I'm glad. You, you know, like, um, I think that's super important to highlight is that whatever it is for you, find it and use that to help you get out of these struggles or to pivot or to change your way. Yeah. Or, you know, because it's going to be different for everybody. I yeah. Mean, that the, church happened to be that for you. You know, the 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 stroke made me so scared of drugs because it almost killed me. Now, like it takes that. Yeah. Like I don't even want to be around it. Like I get nervous if I if I know somebody's on it. I'm like, no, I, I got to get away. I got to get away because it took almost took my life, you know. Mm-hmm. And I can't be around it. I, I I choose not to, but I'm using the experience as knowledge to help the ones that are addicted now. Right. It's okay, you know. Everybody's has their secrets, but if you want to change, these are the programs. Let's do it. You don't have to feel shameful about it. Like we all have done crazy stuff that we want to talk about. But the first day of change is today. If you, if it could be, absolutely, man, one hundred percent. So now you found. So now you're doing the church stuff. You're doing all that. Um, what other goals do you have now for yourself moving forward? Now I'm, I'm trying to transfer. I'm trying to transfer to a university. Hey. Yes, sir. Well, so you, what, I do what, have uh, a couple classes um, left. Um, I, of course, math, that's the worst one. <laughs> are are you one of the ones that waited to do yes, the math at the it's, end? Yes, it's one of my last okay, classes. Yep. I'm doing English right now, English 1C. That'll um, complete my English requirements. I did most of my general ed. I just need a few, three more major ones, and then I could completely get my AST to transfer. So I, it's, just so, it's amazing to be able to even think that I could transfer because I thought my my educational career was gone after my stroke. I thought... I wasn't able to learn for a while, but it took a couple times times for me to fail in class to get a part of the disabilities program at the school. So now I'm in a class. It's called the Access Program at Mount Sac, where it's it's geared to helping students with disabilities. So we're doing the same material as the same as the other classes, but at a slower pace. Okay. So we're still doing the essays. We're still doing all this. But it's at a slower pace and more resources. But we're still doing the same work. Everybody thinks, oh, you're in a disability program? Oh, it must be easy. No, we're doing the same material, but more resources, more tutors are available. So it's up to us to to go to it. Yeah, no, that's great that at least even though you have to adjust a little bit, you're still doing the same work. So you're still getting the same knowledge as everybody else across the board. Um, No, that's beautiful, man. I I think we really appreciate you being able to share your story. I mean... I think the one crazy a story where there's addiction and there's a downfall and you're on the streets is one. 
but an addiction where you're a, a high functioning Ooh, addict is crazy. Yeah, the first and then, time I've ever I, and heard honestly, like the that. big one to me too is just for how long. God, yeah, like that is an insane run of 12, 13, yeah. 14. And like you said, once the dust settles, you're looking back and you're like, fuck, that really was 12, 13, yes. 14, 15 years of me barely looking at my real self in the mirror. Mm -hmm. I would I would still be doing the same thing if I didn't have that stroke. Still. Really? Like, how, how conflicting or how, how was there a fight ever in your head? Like, fuck, does this mean that I have to stop now? What was that like, that little battle? Was it a little battle? Um, I think that battle was won when I came home from the hospital. I knew I couldn't get high You no knew it. You I knew it. That it. was it. I was like, okay, I'm done. Like, I, there was no cravings. There's nothing. And I'm just like so grateful to be a part of this world that I love. Like, I was tripping out. Like, I had to take the bus for a little while after my stroke because I couldn't, wasn't able to drive. So I was taking the bus to school and I was just happy to see the trees. Like, finally I could see the trees at the bus stop. Like, it's chilling. Like, man, grateful just for this, for the grass. Being high, I was going so fast. That I just want to go get home and go to the homies pad, make it there, make sure no enemies were after me. Now I'm like, dang, I, I appreciate this life. You know, I, I'm on the bus, but it's okay. I enjoy taking the bus. <laughs> right? Man, you know that's what? the outlook you have to have. Yeah. When you put it like that, for real, like, I, I feel like I'm, I'm getting tiny, tiny moments every now and then recently where it's like, I'm looking at a nice green tree. I'm like, damn, that's fucking nice. Yeah, right? <laughs> there you go. But it sucks that I want to feel the same kind of, like, gratefulness that you're feeling, but I don't want to have to go through a life, yeah. a life threatening situation. I uh -huh. want to feel that now, yeah. you know? Um, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you're doing your thing. I'm, I, we really will pray for you for real. Thank you. I'll pray yeah, for you. Yeah. Um, make it happen, bro. And, and at the end of the day, hopefully I feel like you'd be great to be able to come back and speak to some of our youngsters. Oh too, yeah. Think, anytime, um, you know, I'm always I see up something for good like that. Come on. For a show happening. You, you know, and then before we wrap up, I do want to touch on your Instagram because yeah. you mentioned all your positive videos and all that. Yeah. And so we were scrolling through there and you had, you dropped those messages. How did that come about? And uh, make sure to shot that out. That way they, they know where to get that info from, man. Yeah, no, I'm on Instagram, you know, uh, j.chico.752. Or just look up Jason Chico and my profile will come up. And it's just motivational. Um, every day is different, you know, um, the underdog. Um, everything's different, but it's to empower you and to uplift you. Even though you have a disability, check it out. Even though you're previously incarcerated, check it out. Even though you're fatherless, Check it out. Even though you've been through traumas, check it out. There's something for you because every message, somebody gets something out of it. So if that, if you need something, go check those videos out because those videos started from me being empty. And now that I'm full, I could share it with you. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Get go. me puffed up. Yep. Hey, don't forget, <laughs> y'all. Check it out. Come on. All right, y'all. Real Network Podcast. We out. Let's get it. Uh